stop the FOMO. Are you afraid of missing out on a 12-bit TV? Because you know, after LG's little fiasco, when they admitted that their HDMI 2.1 for 4K TVs is limited to 10-bit color when you're playing a 4K at 120Hz game. So now everyone's asking, wait a minute, it's only limited to 10-bit color, I want 12 bits. Well, suddenly people are asking questions. Wait, how come TVs are limited to 10 bits? And if that's the case, why do I care about 12-bit color? What, what is 12-bit color? Today, we are going to find out what's so great about 12-bit color and why can't my TV show 12-bit color? Like, what's missing? Why are TV makers so slow? You're pushing 8K, why not push 12-bit on us, right? Let's take it bit by bit on today's Coffee Break. bit 12 bit color 10 bit 12 bit TVs you know what does it all mean and why do I care why do I care that I'm not getting 12 bits of color like why are people in an uproar and then why does the TV look so good anyway at 10 bits like do I need a 12 bit TV what am I missing okay we're going to answer all of that today and why maybe you should wait for 12 bit TV or some of you might say once again over spec over engineered for nothing right before we jump into the hardware, let's talk about 10-bit color, 12-bit color. What does it bring to the table? Why not 8-bits? Speaking of 8-bits, you were watching 8-bit TV when you were growing up. We've had 8-bit TVs for years. Only recently did it go to 10-bits, but we'll jump to that in a moment. Let me talk about how color is defined by bits. You hear color depth, bit depth, right? The bit defines color depth. Now, what the heck is color depth? I have props for you. Here's an example. When you look at color, you look at two things. One is the color space, and that's the numbers of colors. For example, if I said to you, red, green, blue, that's a color space of three colors red, green, and blue, right? In my example, I'm going to use a color space of one. Just blue. This is a color space of one color. What about bit depth? Okay, bit depth is the second description of color. First, you have the color space, one, blue. Second, you have the bit depth. The bit depth you see here is a bit depth of one. <laughs> a bit depth of one means there are only two options. Either it's blue or it's white. That's it. Just two options, right? One bit color depth, it's either blue or white. In other words, the white represents it's so bright that it's gone from blue to white and nothing in the middle. But what about light blue? Like, isn't there between blue and white, isn't there light blue? Well, there is if you had more bits. So two bits of color depth gives me four total shades. Four meaning blue is one, white is two, and then there's two more shades in between. So you got blue, something a little lighter, something a little lighter, and then white. That's a two bit color depth, right? Blue, white, blue, light blue, and then white. And then you have three bit color depth, that's eight shades now. So as you see, this is exponential, right? It's two to the power of whatever bits of color depth you want. So eight bit color is two to the power of eight, which is 256 shades. So if this was eight bits of the color blue, I would have blue, 255 other shades, and then I get to white, right? So total of 256 shades, starting with blue, ending with white, and everything in between, blue, light, 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 light blue, all the way up to white is 256 shades worth of blue. 
Well, what about 10 bits? Wow, that's two to the power of 10. 1,024 shades of blue now. So you start with blue and 1,023 shades later, you're at white. Okay, so we'll stop at 10 bits for now because let's talk about how TVs work. So this is a piece of paper and that's it. TVs get to white differently, right? How, do, how does a TV go from blue to light blue, lighter, lighter, until it's so light that it's now white? The pixel is lit and its luminance, how bright it gets, determines how light that blue gets. So you start with blue, but as you turn up the brightness, the blue becomes lighter and lighter and it gets so bright that you no longer see the blue, it's just white. So that's the luminance of the pixel. The brighter the pixel gets, the lighter the color becomes. It becomes more washed out until there's no color at all. And you have three of these pixels, right? Red, blue, and green, or whatever combination. Every manufacturer has their own way. Some manufacturer introduced a yellow pixel at one point. It was kind of crazy. But each of these color pixels, most commonly red, green, and blue, as you add more light, you make that blue a little bit lighter and even more light, a little bit lighter until it's all white. So in the old days, we're talking maybe 20 years ago, your CRT TV was only capable of 100 nits. That means it goes from dark, like almost black, like a blue, all the way up to the brightest it can get, which is full white, that's 100 nits, right? That's it, the peak is 100 nits. Well, 100 nits means eight bits of color. With only 100 nits, it was only able to define 256 shades of that pixel, and that was fine, because 100 nits wasn't that bright. However, recently, TVs have gotten to 400 nits, 500 nits, suddenly things open up. If 100 nits was only able to get you eight bits of color, right? Because, you know, 256 shades of color, there's only so many shades you can fit in 100 nits of brightness, right? What could you do if your TV went up to 500 nits? Ah, well, now you're getting 10-bit TV. You see that? The chicken or the egg? Once TVs were able to get 500 nits, they were able to fit in 10 bits of color now. That's 1,024 shades. You went from 256 shades to 1,024 shades with an extra few hundred nits. Let's say 500 nits, right? And as the TVs got brighter and brighter, it's still okay because 1,024 shades is a lot of shades. It didn't exceed the number of shades it could present. As a matter of fact, 500 nits is still not bright enough to put out all 10 bits. The 10 bits of color is not fully realized on a TV that could only do 500 nits. A thousand nit TV, now we're talking. And so now we're getting into HDR. Dolby Vision, Dolby Labs, when Dolby Labs developed Dolby Vision, they were saying to themselves, okay, the human eye really enjoys 10,000 nits of color or 10,000 nits of brightness. We can encapsulate the real world in 10,000 nits. If we can get 10,000 nits of color, right? Because we saw in the old days, there's only 100 nits of color. That was eight bits. And then we got better TVs that got went up to 500 nits of color, 1,000 nits. We moved to 10 bits, right? That's 1,024 shades now. What happens when we get to 10,000 nits? Dolby said that they could do it 12 bits. Now, technically, that 10,000 nits may require 14, 15, 16 bits of color, but they felt that, you know, you wouldn't notice the difference anyway. But 12 bits is just enough. And so they fit 10,000 nits worth of color into 12 bits. Now, 12 bits, you're now at 4,096 shades. So if you take my example, Going from blue 
all the way to it's so bright, like 10,000 nits worth of brightness, you could fit in over 4,000 shades of blue before you got to bright white, right? 4,000 shades is a lot, but what do you need to get there? 10,000 nits. And I think we've reached the issue. What TV do you know can get to 10,000 nits? None. If you cannot get to 10,000 nits, you cannot fit in 4,000 shades of any color. That's a total of 6 billion combinations of colors. 12-bit color means, oh, not 6 billion, 68 billion, oh my God. A billion colors, a little over a billion colors is 10 bits, right? So if you take those three pixels and you gave each of those pixels over a thousand shades of color they can play with, you're gonna get over a billion colors. That's a lot of colors and that's fine for all of us so far. But if you can get to 12 bits of color with 10,000 nits, well, suddenly you're at 68 billion colors, right? Okay, so 68 billion colors, that sounds like a lot. Well, your eyes can't handle that many colors at once. It all kind of looks the same. What 12-bit does is this, and this is a very specific use case I want to emphasize. 12 bits doesn't change your world. What changes your world if you went from a 100-nit TV 20 years ago to a 1,000-nit TV today? Ooh, wow, that changes your world. Going from a 10-bit TV to a 12-bit TV, other than the 10,000 nits, actually, that's pretty impressive. But besides that, what it does is it's adding this extra layer of smooth gradation, smooth gradient. What I mean is when you look into the sky, if you walk outside, you see that certain parts of the sky are a darker blue than others as the sky gets closer and closer either to the sun or into the distance, the shade of blue is very smooth. It smoothly goes from a medium blue all the way to almost white, but not quite. Okay, that is like 12-bit color. 10-bit color is, it doesn't, it's not exactly smooth. Maybe it jumps from medium blue and then you see it jump to a lighter blue. And that jump is what they call banding. Here's an example of banding, right? It's impossible to put into words. Pictures worth a thousand words. So let's look at some pictures of banding. There you have it, right? You see that that sharp jump, low bit color gives you banding. High bit color eliminates banding. And so you see that example, 24 bit color, ooh, it's so smooth. But at some point, it's diminishing returns. What about a thousand bits of color? No, you're not gonna tell the difference between a thousand bits of color and 24 bits of color, and in Dolby's case, they felt that 12 bits of color is about as much as the human eye would be able to notice anyway. So Dolby has researched and said 12-bit color, that's all we need. We don't need to go beyond 12-bit color. 8-bit was bad, right? Come on, only 100 nits? 10 bits is good, don't get me wrong. I love the TVs that we have here, 10-bit color. 12-bit is the final domain because it incorporates 10,000 nits worth of light, which has a huge psychological effect as well. I mean, you feel the heat, your body is warming up. In our interview with the Nanonesis CEO, that's exactly how he described it. When he saw the 10,000 nit monitor, it just lit up his whole body, right? So that's why 12 bits is awesome. But your TV cannot handle 12 bits. The 12 bit signal cannot be incorporated in a 10 bit TV because our TVs don't go beyond a few thousand nits at best. Most TVs are lucky to break a thousand nits. And so as long as TVs are limited by their brightness, we will never ever see 12 bit color as defined by Dolby Vision or HDR10 Plus. Both of them require light to bring you those additional colors. And remember, HDR10, just regular old HDR10, there are movies mastered up to 4,000 nits, Mad Max. So unless your TV is capable of 4,000 nits, it's not fully embodying the movie's entire 10-bit color space. You see the problem here? 
Now Dolby Vision, also 10 bits, 4,000 nits, same thing. Any material mastered to 4,000 nits, whether it's Dolby Vision or HDR10 or HDR10+, if your TV is not capable of that brightness, you're losing color, even though it's only 10-bit color. So our TVs today have yet to hit the ceiling of 10-bit color, and we're demanding for 12-bit color. Well, of course the TV makers are puzzled. Like, wait a minute, we, we haven't finished with 10-bit color yet. We, we haven't given you everything that 10-bit color offers. You want 12 bits? Other standards may be able to give you 12-bit color without using brightness, but this is specific to TVs, and that's why we're focusing on that. I understand you know, Photoshop and photography, they have their own way of defining bit depth, but for TVs, Dolby has defined it using luminance, brightness. How bright can your TV get means how close you can get to Dolby's version or HDR10+, their version of 12-bit color. What Dolby wants to tell you is 12 bits is the future and they're ready. They've laid the groundwork. They've defined all the colors within this 12 bit space, right? This 12 bit depth, this 4,096 shades. Dolby has predefined all of that and they're just waiting for the TVs to get to the point where it's so bright that it could completely embody every one of those colors. And that's gonna be a lot of work. Well, that's gonna be a lot of work for the TV makers, right? Because they're, they're just trying to break into 4,000 nits right now. And we're complaining about wanting a 12-bit TV. Our TV cannot fully demonstrate 10-bit color. So what's the point? And now that I got you all excited about 12-bit TV or 12-bit color, what are the TV makers doing to get us there? Absolutely nothing. They're bringing you 8K TV instead. 8K, who asked for 8K? We're asking for 12-bit color. And that's the rub. You'd be much happier with a 4K TV that had 12-bit color than an 8K TV with 10-bit color. You know, the problem is 12-bit color is incredibly difficult to do because it's a combination of brightness and controlling all the thermals, all the heat that would be <laughs> released with 10,000 nits, I mean, that's a lot to overcome. But in the meantime, I fully suspect that we can get to 4,000 nits, and at 4,000 nits, maybe I could finally enjoy 10 bits the way it was supposed to be seen. So anyway, I hope this clears things up for you guys. Hopefully. It rests your mind at ease that you're not missing out on 12-bit color. You know, you should be afraid that you're missing out on 10-bit color. I mean, geez, we're not even getting the full 10-bit color, right? So let's rephrase my original question. Are you afraid of missing out on a real 10-bit TV? Well, you should, because unless your TV puts out 4,000 nits at least, you're not getting 10 bits of color. What do you guys think? Until next time, stop the FOMO.